Hey everyone, in today's how-to video, I wanna show you how to use Google Classroom. And Google Classroom is a free tool from Google and students and teachers could use it for free and collaborate on virtual classrooms and it could be an extension of a physical classroom. So teachers could create multiple classes on Google Classroom, invite students, assign them projects, assign them quizzes, and everything could take place right on the Google Classroom platform. So there's a web version to Google Classroom, what we're gonna focus on in this video, and there's an Android and iOS applications as well. I'm not gonna focus on it. In this video, I'll make a separate video and I'll put a link in the description. Let's jump into the computer here. And in order to access Google Classroom, you have to go to classroom.google.com and press enter. And on this page, if you have multiple Google accounts, make sure you select the right one where you wanna create the classroom. In this video, I'm gonna jump in from the teacher's perspective and the student's perspective, so you kinda of get to see both views. So I'm gonna choose a Google account and press continue, and this should be the homepage of Google Classroom that you're gonna see. And we could click right over here, this plus sign, to create our very first class. This also lets you join a class if you're a student. So if you select join a class, you'll need the class code. I'll show you where that appears in a second. Right now for a teacher, you just press plus and create a class. Now it's gonna give you a pop-up most likely that's gonna ask you if your school is signed up for a G Suite for Education account, which is a free account that your school district has to sign up for, or you could be using it personally as a teacher and you could check this on and press continue. Now we need to name our class. You could have multiple classes here, but each of them require a class name. So let's say this was a science class and section, subject, and room, you could do another time. So I'm gonna skip that. You do have to do the first one though. Press create and your first class is created. So the first thing you could do once you create this classroom is you could go ahead and change the theme of the classroom. By default, it recognized that this was a science class and it picked this background for me, but I could press select themes here and it'll give me options from all these other themes here. So math and science have a bunch of different options here that I could choose from. So I'll just choose this for example, and I'll press select class theme and it's gonna change the overall theme of that class for me. You could also press upload your own photo and do a custom photo there. And you could go to the left side here and press these three lines and go to classes on top. And then you'll get a better overview of all the different classes. So if I was to add a second class, I could press the plus sign again, create another class, agree, press continue, and I'll call this math 101, and I could press create here. And now the math class has been created. I could choose a theme again, or I could press these three lines and go back to the classes to see a big picture overview of all my different classes here. Anytime I could press the three dots here, I could move the classes around, I could edit them. That will bring me to the page where I created that class. And I could also make a copy of the class or archive the class. But right now, let me jump into Math 101 to show you some of the other things inside of this classroom. Next, let me show you how to invite students. There is a code right here, classroom code. Each classroom has a different code. You could press this display and you'll get this code right here where you could go ahead and select it and then go ahead and copy that code. If you copy this code, you could send it as a message or as an email to students that you want to. Another way to do that is up here, you have four different tabs. If you go to the people tab, you'll see the teachers tab. That's over here where you could add other teachers if you wanna collaborate or share your homework assignments, or you could invite students. So if you press the plus sign here, you could go ahead and send an email to a student and then you could press invite. So let me do that here. And an email has been sent to the other students. So let me show you what that email looks like. So this is the email the student will receive from you. Again, it's gonna say that I've invited you to a classroom and the name of the classroom, and they could simply press join to join the classroom. And this is the student view. Now I'm on a different Google account and this is the student view what the students are going to see. So very similar to teacher view, they just don't have the grade option on top, but they have the stream, the classroom and the people option over here where they could see the teacher's names. So let me go back to the teacher's overview here and let's go over some of these options on top. We'll start with stream and then we'll go down the line here. Think of stream as a place to make announcements, for example, a way to communicate with your class and then class work, the next section that we're gonna look at is gonna be where we're gonna actually put assignments 
and have homework for students. But Stream is almost like a social media wall where you could say something here and students could comment. So let me show you here. If I was to welcome my students, I could type in my welcome message here and then I could either post it right now or I could press this little drop down and schedule it for a later time. So I could do my work ahead of time and schedule it for later or just save it as a draft. And I could also add different things to this like Google Drive documents, links, files, and YouTube links here. And I'll go ahead and post this here when I'm done. I could also change this on my selection that do I want all students to see it or a very specific student to see this? If I had many students here, I could choose from this dropdown. And I could also assign this to multiple classes or just one class here. It's gonna be default on the class that I'm typing this on and I'll press post. Now any student could jump in this class comment section and make a comment. I could stop that from happening in the settings option. If I come to this gear icon, press that, I could come down here to the stream option and student can post and comment. I could change this to students can only comment or students can't comment, only the teacher can. So if I wanted more privacy on that stream, I could go ahead and change this stream setting over here and press save on top. Let me go back. At any time, you could press the three dots and edit, delete, or copy a link here that you have or just deleting your post that you created. Let's go to the next section, the classroom tab over here. And this is probably gonna be the most useful place and where you spend most of your time on Google Classroom. You could create assignments and questions here. You could create topics to organize your classroom and you can move things around. So this create option, if you press it, you're gonna see all these different sections. So we could break it down by topic and organize our classroom. That's where you would most likely want to start. Press that and let's say algebra was topic one. I'll press add and then let's create another topic called geometry, press add. And now you have a couple of different sections and you could drag these around here. Now I could go ahead under algebra and I could press create and I could add an assignment. So I'll put an assignment here and I could title this assignment. You put a title to the assignment and the instructions of what you want the students to do. You could go ahead and add Google Drive documents. For example, if I press this, it's gonna get access to my Google Drive and I could go ahead and choose one of my examples here. I'll just choose this math test in Google Sheets and I'll go ahead and add that. And this is really important on this dropdown. Students could either view this, they could edit this, which is most likely what you don't want to do because they're gonna edit your document, but they could make a copy for every student and then they could go ahead and edit that instead. So you could choose that as an option, or if you just want them to review something and don't edit it, the first option is fine. So that's how you would attach any type of document. You could do this with link, different files, and YouTube videos as well. You could also create from scratch by pressing create. I already created this Google sheet, but I could create it over here or any number of these other type of documents like Google Form or Google Docs. And on the right side, I could say what class this is for. If I have multiple classes, I could assign it to multiple classes. I could do this for specific students. I don't have to do this for my whole class. I could assign points to it. So this is out of 100 points or it could be ungraded or I could type in the number of points I want here. I could assign a due date and I could assign a topic again if I broke down my class into different topics. So this is for algebra and then I could go ahead and press assign to all students on top. Or I could press the drop down and schedule this for a later time. I'll press assign. And now if I go back to the stream section, you could see that assignment is gonna show up here. So this is a good place to see a big picture overview of your class. Let's go back to Classworks here again. And again, you could press create and you could explore all these other options here like quiz assignments. They're all very similar to what we just went over, but for quizzes, for example, you could go ahead and use Google Forms. That's a really good option for creating quizzes here. Another Google platform that works very well with Google Classroom. I have a different video on Google Forms, so I'll link that in the description below if you wanna learn how Google Forms works, pretty straightforward. Let me press X and get out of this page. Now let's go back to the people's tab here. This is basically what I showed you where you could add students by pressing the plus sign and inviting teachers up here. You could always select students here and you could remove or mute them or you could email them here. Very easy option by selecting them individually. And now let's go to the great section here. 
And here you could see the different students here, the quizzes that were assigned, and then the class average here. This is a good way to see the big picture overview of your grading. So let me go to the student tab and I'll show you what that quiz that I received from a teacher looks like and how I would answer it. So now I'm back in the student view here. Again, on my stream, I could see that I've been assigned a quiz. I could go ahead and select that here and I could go ahead and add my work if that is required by pressing add over here and choosing any of these options to add my work. Or I could click the quiz over here and go ahead and answer this question and I'll press submit. I could also send a private comment to the teacher once I finish my quiz and I could see the overall points over here as a student. So now that I answered that quiz, let me go back to teacher's view. Now we're back in teacher's view and I could see that quiz one was turned in. The person that submitted that Google form document, it's been turned in. And now I could press turned in over here. Then I could review their work. I could go ahead and select return to them if I wanna to return to them and assign a point or leave it ungraded here. But right here, if I was to assign them a point, I will say 100 out of 100. And then I could go ahead and press return to the student here and I could put a private comment. And when I'm set, I could press return. Now, if I go back to the classes again and go to the math class and come to the grades section over here, I could see that student got 100 and I'll see the rest of the students and the class average over here. And another useful option to look at here is if you press these three lines over here, we looked at classes. You also have a calendar overview, especially when you schedule things in advance, this becomes really handy to see a big picture of your week. And then you also have a to-do list. So if you come over here, you could go ahead and choose one of your classes here and you could see everything that has been turned in or assigned and graded all over here in a quick view. And that's to review section. And then there's a reviewed section of everything you've reviewed. Really great, easy way to see the big picture overview of your class and your to-dos. And I'll put a link in the description. This is Classroom Frequently Asked Questions on everything I wasn't able to cover in this video. So if you have any questions, jump into this page and see if you find your answer here. I hope you found this Google Classroom video useful. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for easy to follow how-to videos. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.